The United States announced on July 7 that it will send Ukraine cluster munitions, prohibited by more than 100 countries, as part of an $800 million security package, a move Ukraine said would have an extraordinary psycho-emotional impact on Russian forces. Asked why he was providing the cluster munitions now, Biden told reporters that it was because the Ukrainians were running out of ammunition. Cluster munitions could boost Ukraine's counteroffensive to reclaim territory seized since Russia invaded in February 2022, said Mark Kanchin, a former Marine colonel and a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington. Ukraine has asked for these weapons to fire against Russian positions with dug-in troops. But Kanchin said cluster weapons would not be a game-changer, adding that no single weapon is going to produce a victory. The problem with cluster munitions is dud rate. Because these munitions drop large numbers of what are, are bomblets, uh, depending on how they land, some of them don't go off and will hang around. And that number is anywhere from 2% on up, depending on uh, the terrain. And civilians can uh, happen upon these these duds and they can cause uh, civilian casualties. Uh, what happens is that a uh, projectile will let these uh, bomblets loose up in the air so the bomblets spread out over an area and go off like hand grenades all over a large area and that spreads out the weapons effects that's why they're so good uh, as uh, uh, to attack areas. And classic uh, targets would be infantry because infantry typically spreads out uh, artillery positions and uh, vehicle convoys. One argument is that the Ukrainians are on the defensive, so there is not a moral equivalency uh, here between the Russians, what the Russians are doing and what the Ukrainians are doing to defend themselves. U.S. inventories of other munitions are already very low. We've given about as much as we can, so there really isn't an alternative out there now. Uh, but the other one is that these munitions are just very effective, much more effective than regular artillery against certain kinds of targets. And now with the Ukrainian uh, offensive not doing as well as people had hoped, uh, they need a, a boost and this could provide that boost. There been a number of members of Congress and many uh, humanitarian organizations that have raised concerns and opposed the, the transfer. Uh, the Biden administration has been quite emphatic about its reasons for doing this, and it has a very strong uh, consensus on Capitol Hill, both Democrats and Republicans, that we need to send these um, munitions, that we need to do uh, more. So, well, most of our allies have signed the convention prohibiting these weapons. Uh, on the other hand, most of them have also uh, been urging the United States to uh, support Ukraine and have supported uh, increased aid to Ukraine. So I think that they are muting their reservations about uh, transferring these weapons at this time uh, and under these circumstances. Well, what the Ukrainians have to do is to be careful where they use these weapons uh, and to avoid using them in villages, for example, because you also get very high dud rates in built up areas. They're much better uh, in open areas. Uh, so I would hope that that insight, you know, that, that targeting uh, advice has gone along with the weapons. Uh, there's no such thing as a game-changing weapon. We keep hoping that, uh, that there's some munition or some weapon that we can provide the Ukrainians that will uh, produce victory. Uh, you hear that uh, you know, when, back when there were discussions on Patriot, when there were discussions about tanks uh, and uh, discussions about F-16s and now uh, cluster munitions. On the other hand, all of these weapons are useful. They're all uh, effective on the battlefield. They will all help uh, Ukraine in its uh, struggle. Uh, but no single weapon is going to produce a victory.